Let's just start with uh, the, this topic, which for my opinion is, uh, is so important as we probably can predict uh, diseases of the skin and which mostly are correlated to the aging process. The symbols of beauty changed over time. As you know, this is the Venus of Willendorf 30,000 years ago, and this is Kate Moss, and so we have different aspects how what's beauty. But we know that uh, aging in the beauty is a thing what we probably can uh, predict and what we probably can prevent. So the most diseases which are uh, common in, in, the, in the skin as acne, skin aging, cellulite, varices, and hair loss. And we heard from our previous speaker about the hair loss and uh, why do we genetic testing for this? The awareness of the individual genetic profile enables us to optimize cosmetic procedures to gain optimal results in hyper and deep pigmentation treatment. Identify risk factors for baldness and prescribe either hormonal or visoactive therapeutic substances, as we heard before, finasteride and minoxidil. Obtain knowledge of your personal genetic risk for developing calories prior to the first surgery. Get a general information about your genetic predisposition for skin aging and develop preventive strategies for skin age protection, skin hyper and deep pigmentation, hair loss, and caloric production. The, uh, European, the European project for uh, skin aging and um, acne, inflammatory diseases of the skin, gained the um, knowledge that diabetes genes, insulin metabolism genes, are the same genes which are involved in acne. So there's no different. And some of you who know the polycystic ovary syndrome in women knows that those, those women have hyperinsulinemia. And we know that the coming up metabolic problems in our younger generations and later when they are growing older in their generation will keep up a lot of acne problems more and more. The genes which are involved in this are a lot, which I only show here, yes, on the side. But one which is involved in diabetes, cholesterol, metabolism, and inflammation is a PPR, a PPAR gamma receptor. That's a receptor, nuclear receptor, which dimerizes with the retinoid acid receptor to build up, uh, to, to stimulate the transcription of a gene. And there is a mutation in this, a PPR gamma uh, gene, which is very important when it's correlated with metabolic syndrome, acne, and inflammation. It's a very important mutation. The French Caucasian population, which was here, is about in 45% involved. And as you probably know, acne is an inflammatory disease, as metabolic disease is an inflammatory disease, and aging is inflammation. And interleukin-1 beta, which is a cytokine produced in acne, is very much involved in the uh, acne uh, disease. And it's very much involved as well in the disease of metabolic syndrome. There's an interleukin-1 cluster, which is, uh, which is in, a, in a gene mutation known to be a transition a polymorphism of the interleukin-1 gene from C to T, from cytosine to th uh, thymosine, and so far it changes one base. The exchange of one base has enormously, enormously results and consequences especially in the way of alopecia areata. You see here, there's an old painting from 1858. This interleukin-1 family, and especially here is the receptor, the receptor um, antagonist involved, is a gene which is mostly uh, involved in this uh, alopecia areata. The best 
um, treatment of this is anti-inflammatory treatment. Besides the cytokines and besides interferons, the macrophage migration inhibitory factor, MIF, is one other clinical, classical immune factor. A soluble, non-dialyzable -dial factor that is produced by synthesized lymphocytes following exposure to a specific antigen, it, it inhibits macrophage migration. And if we talk about HALOS as before, the ECC MIF is very much involved in this uh, alopecia areata, and the polymorphism is a G to C base exchange in the position minus 173 of the gene. This polymorphism is associated with a significant increased risk for developing alopecia in young individuals. You see that? Again, this uh, G to C position uh, site polymorphism. And we heard from our previous uh, speaker here about the steroid 5-alpha steroid reductase. A mutation in the 5-alpha five, five steroid reductase produces high amounts of dehydrotestosterone. This is this way, while the other point, the androgen receptor, is as well as involved in the androgen halos. And the androgen halos, this is the enzyme. This is the mutation in one part, which is called the codon 49, increased the enzyme, enzyme activity fivefold. So androgen excess can cause hirsutism, seborrhea, and acne. And uh, one very important stuff we heard before and I think just we, both of us, we spoke to here in the same session, like you told us, that's very nice, that's very good, very good done. <laughs> so, see lecture. so uh, you see this, and this is the androgen receptor, polymorphism in the androgen receptor, to, which has a um, repeat polymorphism on the length of the gene, and the length of this so-called CAG repeat sequence determines the uh, effect of androgens on the receptor. The shorter, the higher the effect, the longer, the lower the, the effects in men and in women. Is your skin aging faster than you are is a question. It seems that some people are genetically programmed to age slower with regard to skin texture, tone, and laxity. And uh, if we talk about skin aging and everybody is uh, involved in, in this, in this um, specialty of skin aging and every day you see your patients and to know that, that the f most important factors are the intrinsic factors, not so much the extrinsic factors, is something probably what you don't understand or not known before. The extrinsic factors are very famous and you know UVA, UVB light, which can directly destroy the human fibroblast or indirectly affect the collagen by inducing matrix metalloproteinase secretion. This as well is done by free radical, high free radical. Uh, this is another thing, did not some protection. Okay, so the SOD2 polymorphism, the superoxide dismutase, the superoxide dismutase is involved in the, in the uh, scavenging of free radicals at the first part, and the manganese uh, part of this is very, very important. A mutation in this SOD has a consequence of premature aging of the skin, especially if the skin is, um, is, is charged by a lot of radiation, sun exposure, or whatever. There are two classical pathways which are involved in free radicals. One is the uh, NF-kappa B uh, tra transcription factor pathway with inflammation. The other one, and this is a very important one for skin aging because the, the MAP kinases, the mitogen uh, activated protein kinases are kinases which are involved in proliferation survival and apoptosis and death. And the important thing is that they produce the activator protein one, which is the, the precursor, if you want to say that, precursor of the matrix 
metalloproteinases 